Conversations, Conversations with, with S.D. Booker. Booker. Welcome to Conversations with S.D. Booker in conjunction with A Toast to the Men with S.D. Booker. Got a special, special guest with me today, Chef Sid. You can find this brother on his podcast, follow him on his podcast, Steph Sheds Foodie Shack, powered by Buzzsprout. You can go to buzzsprout.com or you can download that app. He records and publishes every Wednesday. Follow this brother. Chef said, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, brother, man. I can't complain. I, you know, God blessed me to wake up this morning. That's all I can ask for. Man, right on, right on, man. I'm glad you joined me. Man, this is uh, monumental. You know, we go way back. <laughs> so uh, Yeah, we do. It's, it's amazing. We, we're doing this right now, man. That's, that's a blessing in itself. Yes, it is. It's, it's a testimony, that, man, that you can come from the hood and, and you can be labeled a hood person and you can still accomplish things in life. No doubt, no doubt. So for the viewers who don't know, we got a lot of viewers that we do know, but for the viewers who don't, who don't know, I'll give you a brief history of me and Chef said, we grew up in the same neighborhood, Pleasant Grove. That's a, that's a, a, a town, I guess you would call it a town uh, in a city community uh, in Dallas, Texas. We went to junior high together. We went to high school together. Uh, I played basketball, he played football. You know, we always had a mutual respect, but we ran with different cliques, different guys, but we always had a mutual respect for one another. Fast forward, I came out with the book, A Toast to the Men. A classmate of ours, uh, Shanetta Reed, said, hey, our, our brother said got a shop. He got a restaurant, you should go check it out. So me and my wife, we got, we got you know, questions on anything we select. So. The first thing is three things we wanted to make sure we're straight with anyone. The parking, uh, the inside, make sure we had enough room for, for patrons and uh, the food. So we got there, the parking was good. Okay, we was like, all right, check one. We got in there, we liked the, 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 uh, the, the mural on the walls, the artwork on the walls. We are like, okay, man, it was spacious, cool. All right, now, I knew Chef said could barbecue. Only had his barbecue <laughs> <laughs> at our annual alumni uh, barbecue. We had, you know, uh, I knew he could barbecue. I knew he could get down with that, but I never had his like cuisine, his his uh, dishes. So I think I had the catfish, the fried catfish. I can't remember what my wife had. Man, the first bite, we were like, oh yeah, this is spot. Yeah, yeah, this this is what we having the party. So we had the the hard lunch, uh, hard lunch book release party. At, at uh Chef Said Spot, Foodie Shack. And uh, it went well, man. I thank you. You man, you you showed me love. Man, that, that went swell, man. I thank you, brother. Hey, I, hey, I'm glad you chose to have it at, at our spot at the time. And uh <clears throat> it's always nice to be able to help a brother out, man. Like, like I said, I'm 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 infatuated with what you do. You know, you know, they told me book had a book. I'm like, hey, <laughs> it's like right. the same person I do. <laughs> so man, hey. you know, but, uh, <laughs> right, right. But you know, man, I'm proud of you, man, of your accomplishments, man. I'm proud of your, your book. I can't wait to read your second book when it comes out. You know, it, and it's it, like I said, it's happy to see people I grew up with and, and from the same community. And we know how hard it was, you know, and, you know, for some of us coming up, but you know, it's, it's good to see brothers make it and be able to do something positive with their lives right now. No doubt, man. That's a blessing. So let's jump into it, Chef said. So I like to ask every one of my guests this first question. If I was an alien and I was to hit Earth today mm -hmm. and I came into contact with you, who are you? Who is Chef said? Um, Chef Cedric is a guy that Secretly, he's he's a little nerdy kid. You know, I, I was always a little brainiac, love chemistry, science, things like that. Uh, I, I love to read. I read a couple books a month. Uh, I love studying history. I love reading about food, things like that. Um, I, I like to be by myself. I'm, I'm a quiet person. You know, um, I love food. So I'm, I'm, my life is always centered around food and reading at this, at this point in my life and, and learning and continue to grow and becoming a better person, you know? Right, right. So it, it sounds like I actually interviewed a gentleman, Terrence Lee. He has a book coming out. Uh, mm -hmm. And we had a discussion about introverts. <laughs> so uh -huh. it sounds like you, and I'm an introvert, man. I'm not, I'm yeah. not the life of the party. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm a thinker, you know, I sit back in the cut. So it sounds like, you know, that's that's what you got going on. More I'm, 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 I'm kind of like that. I'm, I'm kind of a chameleon, you know, I can be lively when I need to be lively. And it, it took me a while to get that way because I was always that ply person, you know, people People who I'm with my friends, I'm open with. You know, I can sit around right. and check because I'm comfortable around it. With I'm not comfortable around people I don't know. Right, know. right, right. And, and I'm, I'm not a talker like that, but I will hold the conversation. But, you know, it, it took me a while to break out that shell to get where I could just, you know, uh, go in a room and talk to people and give lectures and things like that, you know. Right. So right. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean. So you got, Go you got substance. You're not antisocial, but if they got some substance, you dig in on it. You're not afraid to talk at all. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not afraid to talk. Without, you know, usually one, like I said, I, I read a lot and reading uh, people who read a lot. Certain things you read get, get in, it's not conversations for everybody, and you know, it, sometimes it makes weird moments, you know, because. Right. Your know, thinking is different from a lot of people's a lot of times, you know, so, and, and, you know, but some people accept it, some people don't, you know, but I, hey, I love, I love, I have no problem sitting down and debating with people and talking about people and, and learning myself, you know, you have something to teach me, teach me. Right, right. So what inspired you to pursue a career in culinary arts? Because, you know, where we come from, we may have a few guys who uh, open restaurants and we got a bunch of guys who love to barbecue. But I think you're mm -hmm. one of two guys I know uh, that went to school and actually, uh, uh -huh. you know, got, got an awarded or degreed in the culinary arts. What inspired um, you? <clears throat> what started my path to cooking, man, I grew up cooking with my grandma. Um, you know, I had one of the old school grandmas, man. We wasn't nothing. We didn't go eat McDonald's and fast food all the time. My grandma cooked every day, you know. My grandpa got home from work. It was a hot cooked meal on the stove. And, you know, every Sunday was big, big Sunday dinners at the church, you know. So I grew up in the kitchen cooking with her and my great grandma. She she cooked also and and done a lot of baking and things. And um, that's kind of what inspired me. I, even when I was a little kid, man, I had two things I wanted to be. I either wanted to be a doctor, well, three things, a doctor, a scientist, or, or a chef. And uh, I worked in the medical field for 15 years as a, a paramedic and a phlebotomist. And I got bored one day and went to culinary school. I went to La Corte Um, And it was because I didn't go to culinary school to learn how to cook. I knew how to cook, but I wanted to learn the fine dining of cooking. See, it's, 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 it's a beauty that comes with cooking. It's not just putting food on the plate. Right. To me, it's, it's, a, it's a piece of art. I, I love to see the, a person's expression when, when I set a plate down in front of them and, they, and the first thing they eat with is their eyes. You know, and we don't realize that the first thing we eat a meal with is our eyes because if it doesn't look good, it's not going to taste good to you. Right, right. You know, so uh, I went to learn, I went to learn the, finer, the finer side of, of cooking. You know, I could get in the kitchen and cook Southern food all day long and, and, and Mexican food because those things we grew up eating. But I want to learn how to become a fine dining chef. Uh, I want to learn how to use herbs and spices uh, and, 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 and learn plating and make certain sauces that I didn't know how to make. You know? So that's kind of what drove me. Right. You know, I believe we all have gifts and talents, uh, God given gifts and talents. And sometimes for whatever reason, we get sidetracked and we start doing something else, right? Like you you were doing, you was in the medical mm -hmm. field, right? You were doing something else. But I think yeah. we all got a ministry, something we're supposed to be doing that not only fulfills us, but bringing joy to other people. Do, do you think this is your min ministry? Yes. Okay, okay. I do, man. Uh, me, me being in the kitchen is my piece. You know, I'm, you know, probably you being in your office, writing notes and stuff is your piece. Being in the kitchen is my piece. I'm, I'm, I'm at home, my, my, my mind is at peace, my, my body is at peace. With the kids. Even though it's hard work, it's my sanctuary. I, I'm comfortable there, that's my environment. I thrive in it and, and you know, it's what I love to do, man. I, I think at this point of my life, I would be bored if I wasn't in the kitchen cooking, you know? Right. And, and out of all the things I've done and accomplished in my life, I would miss this the most if I, the most if I had to stop doing it. You know? Right, right. You know, um, we both know that anytime you're pursuing something that you're passionate about, it's not going to be easy. And so, no, it's people, not. Yeah. So, whether people are pursuing the culinary arts or their own passions, 
what are some of the roadblocks you've run into in pursuit of where you are, are now and how did you overcome it? Uh, the hardest thing for being a black chef is that we have all, we're, we're looked at differently. We're not given the same opportunities that they would give, give a white chef or somebody else. And, and this is where I go with that. Um, I put in the same work as a lot of chefs around, but had to work harder to get my name out there. Because they people restaurateurs will give them opportunities that they won't give what they won't give us. I've seen a lot of black talented chefs come through Dallas who, sh who should be a staple of Dallas, but they're not because th we're not allowed to shine like that. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. Uh, and, and like I said, we we can go in, we can make we can make a restaurant millions of dollars every year, and we can and we can have this restaurant doing good, and we're still looked upon differently you know i remember one time i was i'm not going to say the company but i became executive chef at one restaurant i wasn't given the same budget that the, that the chef before me had i wasn't given the same opportunities to pick you know to bring the staff i needed on everything restricted for me in which i started out as a sous chef with this company and grew with them but the, but when it came my time to be the executive chef i wasn't my chain was a little tighter than his was. My budget was a little tighter than his was. You know, I, I had more things I had to prove, which I had already proven these things because I had already been doing the job, you know? Right. So, you know, it, it's, it's things like that, but you know, it's, it's you, you, you can accomplish anything you want to accomplish in life. All you got to do is work hard. And that's what I tell little kids when I, when I talk to little kids, man, it's, uh, if you want it, you can achieve it. And I've always wanted it. And uh, that's what makes, that's what keeps me going to the end. That's what got me the respect I have in the culinary world now. Right. You know, you, you, you said something I was going to touch on later, but I, I dive into it now. Uh, you said it's much harder for black chefs. And, um, you know, about three weeks ago, me and the wife went out for our anniversary, went out to uh, the ocean there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was like, man, you know, the, we met the, uh, the head, I guess the head cook or the chef, we met him, white guy. Um, the waiter, I think he was Latin. And I'm think I'm just sitting here thinking, cause I'm always thinking business, right? So I'm like, I didn't see a black uh -huh. person working in there. And then uh -huh. the waiter giving me this whole spill uh, about trying to sell me uh, some card, some gift card or something, right? Like, like I'm, 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 uh, I'm, a, I'm a father of five, something, 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 right? So I tell my wife when he leaves, I was like, man, this guy makes six figures this way. Easy. <laughs> I like, ain't falling for that spill. Mm -hmm. So what is it going to take for us to get in those positions where we, we're these waiters that's making six figures? We're the head mm -hmm. cooks. We're the chefs. We're the two chefs. Do we have to get focused on owning our own, creating our, and owning our own high-end restaurants, or, or is it another route? Yes and no. You know, it, it, it's, we, for one, the first thing we have to do is start supporting each other. Uh, our money touches our hands one or two times that it goes to somebody else, Sometimes, most time one. If you look at other communities, you know, the Jewish community, their money touches their hand maybe six to seven times before it leaves their community. Right. Asian community is the same way. We have a problem supporting each other and, and supporting the black business and, and 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 staying with them. And that's the thing, you have to stick with these places. Just like you just like you love to go to Papa Do's, you have to love to go to your, your little local black restaurant also. Right. You know, and you can't go in there being biased. I, I once had a seafood restaurant and the 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 uh, the black folks that were coming there, man, you too high, you too this. But these are the same people that'll go to Papa Do's and spend that one that money with no problem. But when you come and you see it's me behind the counter, right. all of a sudden you expect me to have this, I gotta have a lower standard. Right. And I tell people, my food tastes just as great as Papa Do's does, if not better. No doubt. So you can't tell me you're not getting the same standard, but you want me to have a lower price margin because you feel, because this is, I guess, because I'm a black man that, 
I, you know, I, I should be cheaper to my people. But yeah. at the same time, you have other people coming to your restaurant who have no problem, who have no problem supporting you. Right, right, right. But 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 it's hard to get that support from our communities, you know, and, and that steady support. Like I said, and it's, it's been a lot of great chefs, man, that have came through Dallas, black chefs that have had some great restaurants, but they only last a, a you know few years because we don't we won't patronize them like we do other places. Right. And and you said something very, very important. I think uh well, I know we devalue one another. Yes, we do. As soon as we see that skin color. We devalue each other and you look like me my skin color but and i'm not talking about me personally but we devalue each other as soon as we see someone that looks like us and yes. uh, and that's a reflection of how we feel about ourselves we yes. don't feel like we're yes. worthy so if i don't feel like i'm worthy i definitely don't feel like you're worthy so yes yeah i want the hookup i shouldn't have to pay full price i shouldn't have to pay uh x number of dollars because I'm not even worthy of that. So how can you be worthy? It's like mm -hmm. seeing, seeing Django ride in on a horse. It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, who this nigga think he is? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you know it, it, it's, it's, it's sad, man, you know, but I tell people all the time, the people who follow and support me the most aren't even my color. Mm. And, 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 and I appreciate them. I appreciate the people who come from restaurant to restaurant with me and, and have came from restaurant to restaurant with me and, and have appreciated what I bring and, and steady to this day support the things I do. And most of them are not my color, you know? Right. That, but that's what I have, that's what I work with. That's what I have to thrive off of because I, I stopped a long time ago worrying about trying to do things for my people, man. And, and that was my biggest thing when I became a chef, man. I wanted places in the hood. I wanted to give back to my community. Right. You know, I, I want to be this place where young kids are coming like, man, he started out like us. Right. But And, and look what he accomplished. But man, it's hard, man. It is, it is know? hard. Yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, and I created a video on this uh, yesterday. It's a renewal of the mind we have to go through. You know, our, our minds are distorted, man. They, uh, our thinking is off. Uh, yes. Yeah. So um, this a we got to re uh, recalibrate how we think, recalibrate our minds, our thoughts, what's important, what's not important, and see the value in one another. Uh, but yeah, but I'm always support you, brother. Now, I know each chef has their own style, their own specialties. Who did you uh, mirror or, or, or kind of construct your style around? Who did you watch and say, hey, I want to mirror my style after him? Or her? Uh, I didn't really mirror my style after nobody. I kind of, I've kind of created my own little niche, man, and uh, my own little flavor profile. But the people who I grew up admiring was Julia Childs. Uh, I thought she was a great chef. Uh, she brought a lot to the culinary world. Uh, my other favorite chef I loved was Emerald. I used to love watching Emerald, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I liked his flamboyancy and his style the, that the he energy. had. <laughs> yeah, the energy that he brought, you know that that was live to me. And uh, it was a it was a chef that used to cook on Channel Thirteen. Uh, his name was John something. Uh, I knew you talked. But, but he was the Cajun chef that had the hot sauce in the bottle, man. I grew up watching him with my grandmother all the time. Now, is that the guy that said, uh, "I guarantee"? Is that him? Uh, I can't remember. I know he used to always have the hot sauce. Be like, put a little, yeah. put a little bow in there. Okay. You know? And he came on Channel Thirteen. He also had a, a a paint show too, a drawing show or something. That came on Channel Thirteen. Yeah. But uh, but like those are the people I grew up in mind, man. Besides the women in my family that cooked, man. I I grew up with even on my grandfather's side of the family, man. I, I grew up with some ladies that could throw down, man. And, that, that, that's what you know that got me that got me hooked in the kitchen seeing how good these old ladies would get in there on the holidays and stuff and and throw down and how they love to put their heart and everything into what we ate you know mm -hmm. so those, those are people my, my, my family is probably the most inspiration and ladies that i grew up around that cooked in the family and my grandfather too my grandfather did a lot of cooking also so i grew up i had a lot of people around me that loved to cook and it just one of them natural things just rubbed off on me, man. Right, right. So what, what is your cuisine? If I was to, if someone was to go into uh, says foodie shack, <laughs> what can they expect? The foodie, the foodie shack, 
it's made it's 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 more like a American cuisine with with a lot of with twists, you know. Uh, I have a shack chicken sandwich, which is uh, a barbecue. I mean, a, a breaded chicken sandwich that I dip in barbecue sauce, mm. put smoked gouda cheese on it, and bacon. Wow. You know, and these are just flavors that I I, I love. I, I'm I'm a big cheese fan. I love gouda cheese, and I, I I like I like how it goes with other foods. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of all over the board when it comes, but I'm more of like American style American with a twist, you know. Right. Um, I did a little bit in Cajun, where what we call Cajun with fish and, and po' boys and stuff. Uh, I have my own style of feelings, man. It's just, it, it's the Cedric style. <laughs> right. Right. You know, it's kind of hard to explain, you know. It's, food food, food is, is, is profiles. You know, it, Italy has a profile. The South has a profile. And I just kind of made my own little profile. From, I said, man, I, I can show you my library, man. I have thousands of food books that I've read. You know, and, and I take I take a little bit from her and a little bit from there. Sorry, that's my dog, man. He okay, does one okay. <laughs> he, well, he's having a moment right now. You all right? It's all good. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I kind of take a little bit from her and there, man, and kind of come up with my little own creations, if that makes sense. It does. It does. Uh, I'm going I'm to I'm call your style old dirty bastard, man. got no problem, man. Yeah, yeah, something like that. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I can... I, I tell people I can cook from anywhere around the world. You yeah. know, if you can't me say, hey, I want a Russian meal. Can you cook me and my family? I could cook you a, a Russian meal. Wow. I could cook you a meal from, from Canada. I could cook you a meal from Africa. I could cook you a meal, a meal from India. You know, I, I, I'm not, I don't limit myself, man. I, I can, I fly with the clouds, man. I, I can get in there and, and create, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's what I thrive off of. Like I said, I'm, I, don't, I don't have a particular style. My favorite regions to cook from, it's Italy and Asia because I love those flavor profiles, and um, and I love Indian food. I eat a lot of Greek food, so mm-hmm. I, I love bold flavors and stuff. And I kind of bring a I, I bring a boldness and and things like that to what I cook. Right. Yeah. It, it's definitely an art form. Um, I know it's called culinary arts, but I don't think people really realize like um, that level of cooking and preparing is an art form. Like you you have to be really passionate about it. And uh, it's like a masterpiece you're delivering to the people. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My, now, speaking of art forms, my, my wife wanted me to ask you this. Now, I know I'm a writer and writing, you know, sometimes I'll sit, get my thoughts together and write. And sometimes I'll freestyle. Man, it just uh-huh. come out of my spirit. I know rappers and singers are like that, too. Mm-hmm. Painters are like that. She wanted me to ask you with cooking. Do you ever or is, is it? And I know certain people are looked down upon, like the the, the rapper rappers look down upon people that can't freestyle. <laughs> you know, it's like like you ain't no true artist. And, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And if and if and then as a writer, I'll be honest. As a writer, I feel like man, you shouldn't have to go through all these classes if it's truly <laughs> easy, right? Yeah, yeah. But I, man, yeah. I do understand it as a chef because that's a different thing. People ain't just gonna let you you know, be, be their head shelf. Yeah. And, and you, you got no documentation behind you, you know, because what you said you did in your mom's kitchen. So yeah, yeah, I, I totally get that. So is there a difference between like guys like can freestyle and just create something? And they do this a lot on the cooking shows, right? They can just mm-hmm. create something and guys that have to be structured and everything to the T. Yes, it's it's a big difference, man. Uh, some chefs can only survive by recipes, mm. and if you take that recipe from them, they have no creativity inside of them. Wow. See, they 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 create. See, okay, it's like if you have different cars that hold different value, right? Right. So you have chefs that work in nursing homes. You have chefs that work in in school in in schools. You got chefs that work at, at uh, Chili's and Papa Do's and places like that. Right. Then, you got chef, then you have chefs that work at fine dining establishments. Right. Now, the fine dining and, chip and, uh, and your little mom and your, and your other big restaurants, they're all on the same level. Now, a chef from Chili's, I'm not going to say he can't do everything I can do, but he doesn't compare to what I do. That makes sense? Right. That makes sense. Because everything, everything he's given another chef has created for him to do right 
So he doesn't have to be creative in what he does because every day Chili's has this product that they send him and this product is already done. Yeah. Only thing that chef has to do is make sure these plates get out the window in a timely fashion. Right. Because big corporations has a chef who creates for them and passes that recipe down to all the other restaurants, right? Right. So when you're in a fine dining restaurant or you're on your own establishment and you're the person who created the menu, see, we, 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 the, the chef, us, us chefs that, that, can, that can create menus are the ones who, who can be in there who can be in there in freestyle because it, it takes to in order to be in order to freestyle you have to know how to create exactly. you have to have see the people on chop people don't realize take a show like chop mm -hmm. them chefs have to have a thousand recipes already in their head they don't know what they're gonna get right so they have to know how to be creative now if I, I can tell you if you took these if you took five chefs out of cheddars Chili's and places like that, black eyed peas, and you put them on that show, you may have one or two that can touch, that can get created. Most of them probably wouldn't be able to get it because they're not used to doing that. Right, right. right. You know, so uh, us, us who us who work in restaurants where we get to write menus and, and change up menus, where we have to be creative because most people don't understand. We change most most chefs in the rest, we change the menu up four times a year. Mm. Because it's a difference from what you serve in fall and winter to what you serve in, in, in summer and spring. Right. See, in winter, we go, you'll, you'll notice in restaurants, we go with more heartier dishes, more, 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 you know, more, maybe more fried dishes, things that are more have a lot of heartiness to them. You'll get your your, your beef soups, your chilies, your, your things to pack flavor like that. Right. When in the spring and summer, we're gonna lighten up the food. It's hot outside. It's different fruits that's available. It's different vegetables that's available. So you kind of you roll with the seasons, and when rolling with the seasons, you got to be able to, you got to have you have to be able to be creative. Right. I know peach season comes up every year, so I don't want to serve a person peach cobbler every year. Exactly. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I get you. I yeah. Get you. Yeah. So I want to touch on this. We kind of touched on this this point I'm about to make, but I want to piggyback. I mean, through my research, I, I saw that. As black people, we make up 12% of the workforce. Yes. But in, in, in your world, as far as uh, head, head cooks or chefs, we make up 17%. That's 5% more than the workforce, right? Yes. So I sat back and thought, I was like, when I go to these fine dining restaurants, I don't see a lot of black presence. So are they talking about like cheddars, head cooks, or chilies? <laughs> what, what, what are a, a lot about? of those are, and a lot of those are your mom and pop businesses. You know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, a lot, a lot of those are your mom. Uh, uh, man, it's 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 a brother that has a restaurant in Garland called Pangea. Wow. And if anybody y'all 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 go support this, but this brother he has an Asian fusion restaurant. Man, brother puts out some great food. You know, but a lot of people don't know about this brother. I've never heard of him. You know, so it, it's, it's places like that, you know, it, it's a lot of jewels out here, man, that, that are owned by us. And, so, and, and go ahead. Yeah, how, how do we get that word out, though, Chef said? How, how do we, <laughs> like, what? Well, I mean, uh, we, got, we got social media. Or, I mean, are we not, as, as business owners, do well, we have to push more? Like, do we have to share each other's posts? Yeah, more? We, we, we have to share, we have to share more, you know, when we learn. I learned about this risk coast because I hang around a lot of foodies. Right. And, and a lot of my friends, that's what we do, man. We try to find new restaurants and new things to try. So I'm, I'm always stumbling across something or, or my friends call and telling me, hey, you need to go try this. You need to go try that. You know, so I try to spread the word as much as I can. Once I go try them, you know, I, I send people their way, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, it, it's, it's, I got a friend, he's giving to open up a chicken restaurant, uh, Chef Lee. He gave me my first start as a sous chef, man, in a fine dining restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and this brother, he he's put in a lot of work over the years writing menus for a lot of big restaurants out here. You know, he the one that got me to get more to menu writing and create my own menus. And uh, this brother's giving me to open a chicken restaurant, you know. So once he get it going, I'll spread the word on that for y'all. But but man, we need to support these brothers that got these, uh, you know, even, even if it's your places like Sweet Georgia Brown that's still black owned, uh, 
South Dallas Cafe that's still black owned. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the gentleman that owns South Dallas Cafe, he has several restaurants now. You know, he has a steak restaurant. He just put in uh, Addison. You know, so it, it's a lot of places out here, man. We just got to do, we just got to look around a little bit. That's okay. all. No doubt. No doubt. Now, you know, I, I've been following you for a while, of course, and I was following you when you were in school, in culinary uh -huh. art school. And one thing I noticed, you know, it looks, it looks like you guys had to, I don't know if you had to master it, but you had to have your hands in different things from pastries and, and uh, desserts and, and uh, the breads and everything. Yes. You have to be yeah. well-rounded, right? Yeah. Now, there's two things, I want two two part question here. I did notice, and I might be wrong, I think you were the only brother <laughs> in there. <laughs> uh, one of two, it wasn't yeah. me. It wasn't now, how a lot. Was, how, how was that experience in, in culinary art school? How was that? Man, I loved it, man. Uh, like I said, I already knew how to cook. So it, it was it was easy for me. You know, I, I, I'm not trying to brag, but I graduated uh -huh. the top of my class, man. Uh, I got recommendations by every shift that I, a class I went through. And um, man, I, it, it was wonderful for me, but it wasn't a lot of black. It, it was a lot of black people going through culinary school. But a lot of them didn't translate to making it as chefs. Mm, okay. You know, but my, my class started out with probably like two or three hundred people, and when it ended, probably less than a hundred or some people. Okay. You know, and, and 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 even from there, a lot of people who graduated with me are not in this field today. Wow. So they couldn't hang, and you just feel like it wasn't their passion, it wasn't their true passion. Man, I'll tell you, man, you got to be a little crazy to be a chef, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and, you, and, and you got to you got to have a certain mind type, man, because it's, it's brutal. Yeah. You know, we, we, we make it look easy. But man, our job is brutal, man. You, see, people don't see. I, I laugh at people all the time, man. I did 16 hours sitting at a desk today. I do 16 hours standing on my feet all day. Yeah. yeah. See, it's a big difference. I'm, big I don't get to sit down. I'm right. on my feet. Feet for right. 16 hours straight, moving, thinking. I may go sit down for 30 minutes here, sit down for 10 minutes there, but I'm on my feet all day. My brain is going all day because right. I'm, I'm, I'm still having the problems, you know, uh, solve problems, create, make sure this is ready, make sure that is ready. You're on time limits, you got to get ready for dinner rush, you got to get ready for lunch rush. If you're open on weekends, you got to get ready for brunch. Then you got three hours or two hours to get the restaurant turned all the way over to get ready for dinner. Wow. So it, it, it's a lot of people who who want to who, who want to be chefs once they get in this field, they realize the work is not for them. Because see, and, and this is why, and this is, and we'll talk. I want to touch on this in one second, but this in, in, in a restaurant, man, I, I have to get a plate out in fifteen minutes. Wow, thirty minutes at the most. So just imagine if I got 250 people in my restaurant and I got to try to get everybody their food out in a certain time. Right. Now, it, it doesn't all come out at once because everybody doesn't sit at once. Right. You know, and, that, and that's, 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 why we, that's, why we, that's why we sit guests certain ways and tell guests it's going to be an hour to 30 minutes so the kitchen can keep up with the orders. But man, it, it's once the once the lights come on, man. What we call this? Once the show starts, we turn the lights off in the kitchen, and the, and that ticket starts rolling. Right. Hey man, it's on. Hey, it's on. You know, and you can't you can't walk off. Get tired. You got you 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 in the trenches, man. It's 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 time to go to war. Yeah. And uh, yeah. a lot of people can't handle that, man. It's it's very physical being a chef, man. Very yeah, physical. Man. Wow, man. Um, I got a question, man. Now, when I tell the waiter. I want my chicken prepared a certain way. <laughs> and he he goes back to you and it comes back wrong. Nine times out of 10, whose fault is it? Oh man, nine times out of 10, it's, it's my cook's fault. Wow, really? And and, and 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 but see, now I tell you this, it depends on who I serve that chicken to, if it's undercooked or not undercooked. Now. And, and, and this is a joke in the kitchen. We can always tell when it's a black person sending something back. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear this. I want to hear this. Especially when it comes to chicken. Because if we see a little pig in our chicken, 
Oh man, that ain't done. That ain't done. <laughs> I'm sitting in that back. Yeah, yeah, we don't play that. Well, yeah. if anybody else, like white people or something, they see pig and HA. Oh, that's so because yeah. by cooking turns, it doesn't have to be done peak. It's the temperature that we have to cook it up to. Exactly. People don't so, realize that. Yes. Long as that chicken is at the correct cooking temperature, that chicken is done. Right. Now you may get out to the bone right. and see a little peak. Right. That doesn't mean the chicken is not done. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and now, that's what a lot of people don't understand. Yeah, they don't, especially us. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I, I'm, I'm gonna pick on us a little bit more. I think I know the answer to this question, man. Um what group orders their steak well done <laughs> the most? Mostly us. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I hate when we do that. I say, man, you hey, you and, killing. And, and, <laughs> the, the, the experience. Hey, the, 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 that's another joke in the kitchen. Wow. You always tell when a black person order the steak because they want it well done. Let's <laughs> yeah, get, get a hamburger, man. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and to touch on that, people don't want, okay, this is the thing with red meat. And I can't I can't eat it rare myself. I can't do the rare. I, you know, that's, I can't do it. I now, do, if I'm I eating, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm a medium person to medium yeah. rare. Yeah. Um, Unless I'm eating uh, a capaccio or something like that. I mean, not capaccio. Uh, my mind just been blank. But it's a beef dish. It's raw beef dish that we eat that's cooked with lemon juice and, and acids and things like that. Okay. And you, It's like a tartare, like a beef okay. tartare. Okay. Uh, stuff like that I can eat raw because I know it's cooked with acids and, and vinegar. But just eating a steak rare or a black and blue steak, I can't do. Yeah. Uh, but you do get different levels of flavor when the steak is cooked a certain way. And once you cook it the way well done, you cooked all of the, the, the flavor that you're supposed to taste in beef, you cooked it all out. If that makes sense. That makes sense, yes. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. And, and I tell people, if you took and you tasted a piece in each stage, then you would understand what I was saying because when it's rare, you taste, you taste a real beefy flavor. Okay. And as it keeps cooking, that beefy flavor turns into another different flavor. Right. It's it's not that it's not that beefy because you're cooking that flavor out of it. So, the, but yeah, a lot of us don't understand that part. You know, we want it well done. But I, I, but it, there's a lot. It is a big group of us that are changing. Right. You know, a lot, especially a lot of the foodies, they're changing and starting to go other ways with it. Yeah, yeah. I had to I had to hit my wife to that. I was like, no, nah, that's not how you do a steak, baby. So when we ordered steaks, so she finally trusted me uh -huh. and, and got it medium and tasted yeah. it. She was like, wow. I, t I actually taste the flavor all in this. Yes, okay. yes. That's what I've been trying to tell you, baby. <laughs> yeah. and you know what? Salmon is the same way. Yeah. I, uh, if you cook salmon all the way done, it's, it has a a dry flavor to it. Yeah. But if you could take that salmon and eat it medium, yeah. man, it's the best piece of fish that you can eat, man. Yes, I believe that. I, I know that for a fact. Now, I want to educate the people because... You're gonna educate me too on this. Now, pairing meat and uh, spirits, wine uh -huh. or liquor. So okay. we'll take three meats. Uh, we'll take beef, we'll, take, we'll say steak. Uh, okay. uh, we'll take fish. Okay. And uh, chicken. Okay. What, 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 do you, what do you suggest we pair with that as far as liquor and wines? Now steaks, um... Any red wine goes great with a steak. Um, there are some whites. And it all depends on what spices you're going to be using also. Uh, so if you're going with, with uh, let's say you're going with a steak, but you got a little spiciness to it. Maybe you're doing, um, doing some type of Asian barbecue steak on just, you know, where it's, it has a little spice to it, it's a little spicy. Then you may go with a, a more drier wine to come back to spice because you know some wines have spice are spicy also have spicy notes to them. Right. So you don't want to have a, a spicy dish with a spicy wine because that all kind of overpowers your palate. But uh I would go with like a dry red wine or either semi-sweet wine if you if you know if you don't like stuff like that. Uh my favorite red is a Malbec from Argentina. Followed by Pinot Noir. To me, those are my two choices when I eat steak. Um, now, as far as going to fish, uh, white wines go great with fish and, and chicken. 
um, white wines I like more uh, Sauvignon Blancs, Chenin Blancs, things like that. Um, I like uh, wines that have uh, lemon finishes to them uh, or some type of citrus finish to it because that seems to complement the fish a little bit more. Uh, especially on a piece of baked fish when you, you know you got a little lemon on there a little a, a wine that has a citrus notes in it seems seems to go a little better with that um and chicken also chicken chicken can go either way fried chicken actually goes better with champagne wow i didn't know that fried chicken and champagne yes Yes. Man, that, that, that sounds like a comedy skit. <laughs> yeah, it, it's 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 the bubbles and the fried chicken, man. It, uh, champagne goes very well with fried chicken. Well, I never would thought that. Yeah, yeah, you have to give it a try one day. Get get a good bottle of champagne and eat some fried chicken. And you and call me tell you what you think about it. Man. I'm, I'm gonna check that out, man. Now, what can I pair my Maker's Mark Forty Six with, man? Uh, that's a, a great that's steak. A, that's a bourbons, bourbon, man. Bur bourbons, bourbons go great with red meat. Okay. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to have with red meat. Also, if I'm not drinking wine, I like bourbon. Uh, fish, vodka, or tequila, especially a spicy fish. Uh, tequila. You know, uh, nice, nice tequila drink, margarita, or something like that. Yeah. You see a lot of Russians. Uh, eating and drinking that way with the vodka yeah. in the fish. Uh -huh. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. Okay. Uh, chicken. Now, chicken is one of the ones it can go great with a cognac, and it can also go great with a gin. I believe. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe like a. Um, uh, what's the one in the blue bottle? Bombay. Bum bum okay. is a nice smooth gin that goes that, that compliments chicken well to me. Okay, okay. People have been trying to get me to try the Bombay. I had a, a bad experience with gin when I was 18. I, I hadn't touched gin since. But people, see, that's because that's because we were drinking bumpy face gin. That was that was the yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, Bombay is Bombay is a good gin. Uh Hendrix. Even yeah, even Tango Ray. Hendrix is a good gin also. I mean, yeah, yeah. People told me. Yeah, uh, cognacs, bourbons. You can always pur good with a with a red meat, man, and, and you wouldn't be you you wouldn't be mad. Uh, vodka, tequilas, chicken, and fish, and uh, I'm trying to think what else. Now, desserts, moscatas, riesling, ports. And yes, Moscato is a dessert wine, folks. It's not a wine. <laughs> right. All y'all Moscato drinkers. Uh, <laughs> If you drunk Moscato House, but we drunk, you really appreciate it a lot more. It goes, it goes great with, with some berries, with a nice uh, whipped cream or something like that. You know, some type of berry dessert. Moscato brings out great flavors in that. And uh, ports does all. I love, I love a reason and a port with creme brulee. Mm. You know, that that's one of my favorite parents right there. A, a nice port wine with a creme brulee or a nice reasoning with a creme brulee. You know, those those are pretty good to me. I gotta try that. Now, for your ladies, a little chocolate cake, red wine, red yeah. wine and chocolate cake. It's like a little match in heaven, y'all. Man, yeah, that, that sounds yeah. sound like something a woman would love. <laughs> <laughs> now, we we know well, we, we've heard that food at times can be an aphrodisiac. We heard yes. about oysters, even chocolate, um, you know, different foods can be aphrodisiac. Man. If if I wanted to get my woman in the mood to 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 act like old girl and coming to America, <laughs> whatever you want, whatever you you know, what 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 is the food, man? What's the meal? You know, I'm gonna tell you this, man. Most women tell me it's sexy just to watch a man cook in the kitchen. Mm, I've heard that. Especially when he does it in the kitchen with confidence, you know. Right. Uh, I, I've had multiple women tell me they love watching a man cook in the kitchen, and and lot, and for a lot of women, that's a turn on to them, yeah. you know. Just just seeing this man in there conquering his food and making this great meal for her to eat, you know. But uh, aphrodisiacs, man, I, it's it's actually like you said, chocolate oysters. Uh, 
I don't, I don't, I don't know if those foods really, really bring out endorphins like that, you know, because I, I, I can eat oysters all day long and yeah. I love them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it don't the two don't never correlate. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not like it's instant Viagra or something, right. you know. <laughs> yeah, right. So I, yeah, I don't ever get that, and I'm not a big chocolate person like that. So, I, uh, but. With women who is, is women who you you sit down some chocolate and some strawberries and some wine. Hey, they it, it does it for them, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now we, we we're wrapping up a bit. Chef said, "Man, I, I really enjoyed it so far." Now, what advice could you give to upcoming chefs, head cooks, about getting into the industry, or or is that thinking about getting into the industry? Uh. Advice I always give young cooks, make sure this is what you want to do. And if this, this is your passion and this is your piece and you, and, this, and you love cooking, try to be the best you can at it and dream to be the best you can. And, and put in the work of studying. You know, it, it's food has changed. Food, food didn't just start now. Food started way back in the day, man. And food has just evolved. And there's no rules to cooking. Right. Be yourself. You don't have to be like somebody else. You don't have to, you don't have to say that I'm, I'm like this person or that person. Be yourself in the kitchen. And by being yourself, your food will reflect you. And, and you will get the compliments and the love that you want out of your food just by doing it, man. I, it's, and that's one of my biggest things. I, I'm, I'm myself. I, I, don't, I don't take nobody else's style. I don't take nobody else's recipes. I conquer things myself and make it my own. And, and yes, <clears throat> My young chefs also, don't let chefs that are assholes discourage you from what you want to do. You're going you're gonna to come up with challenges between everybody, you, but you have to learn how to learn from that chef. Because trust me, most of the chefs that are assholes have a lot of knowledge. But you got to know how to get that knowledge and look over the asshole part. So you know? scared. Yeah. 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 Now, this last segment is called 10 Speed. Okay. I name off 10 nouns, and you say the first thing that comes to your head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I hope I don't catch you off guard with one of these names, but I, I, I think you're going to be all right. <clears throat> okay. Julia Child. Great chef. Emerald Lagasse. Lots of energy. Gordon Ramsay. Prick. <laughs> but probably only on TV, though. Right. B. Smith. Uh, respectable chef. Edna Lewis. Don't know who that is. Yeah, I thought I might catch it. Like, she's a, she's an African-American woman pioneer in, in the game. One of the first women to actually be uh, recognized uh, as being a head, a head chef. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Marcus Samuelson. Don't know who that is either. Yeah, I saw this guy. He's an Ethiopian guy. Um, he's on some cooking show, uh, but I've seen him around for a while. Oh, I know who you're talking about. He's on. He's on. He'd be on Chop sometimes. Yes. Right. That's. Yes. I know you're talking about. Yes, I know you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my wife right. didn't know him either. I had to show her his picture. She's like, "Oh yeah, I know that guy." Yeah. Yeah. I know who he is. Yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about. He. Yeah. He's. He's actually a pretty good chef, man. He, really? He's had. A, yeah. He's had a lot of. He. He puts out. Well, they say when he had his restaurant, he put out some nice cuisine. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Carla Hall. Carla Hall. Haven't heard of her either. Well, you know her face. Uh, I'm sure you know her face. Uh, she's been on the show with Marcus Samuelson a lot too. Uh, tall, light complexion, black lady, uh, curly hair. Uh, she was on Top Chef. Yeah, she's been around for a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, this should ring a bell. Trevento Reserve Malbec. <laughs> mm, what what show did he have? No, no, no. That, that, Trevento. Reserve. Trevento Reserve. Don't know what that is. Man, you, you got to know what that is, man. Trevento Reserve. It's not a person. Is it a bourbon? It's a, it's a wine. I believe it's a wine. Yeah, it's a wine. Okay. Yeah, it's a wine. 
Uh, Man, you don't you don't have any you don't have any names of wines in this <laughs> Yeah, there, there's a lot out there. There's a lot out there. There are a lot. That ain't fair. That, yeah, that wasn't fair. All right, chitlins. Not chitterlings, chitlins. <laughs> chitlins. Uh, man, that's a food that we had to make use of out of slavery. And we learned how to turn that cuisine from nothing into something. There you go. Last word, last noun. Chef said. Chef said. Oh, man. A chef that loves what he does, has a passion for cooking, and always strives to be better. No doubt, no doubt. Chef said. How can the people follow you on, on social media? You can follow me on Chef Said on Instagram, Chef Said on Facebook. Uh, like I said, you can go to Buzz Post, look up the Foodie Shack podcast that I do every Wednesday. And uh, here towards the end of the year, y'all going to have the Foodie Shack food truck coming at you. You know, we just to bring, bring this goodness back to the streets, man. You know, no people doubt. been asking for it and been wanting it, so... I'm in the process of building out a food truck right now to make that happen. No doubt, man. I'm looking forward to that, man. I definitely will support, brother. Hey, man, I appreciate your time. I know you're busy, man. I appreciate you, man. This is beautiful. I thank you, brother. Thank you, man, for inviting me to your platform. And I like to leave on this note, man. Y'all supported Black business, man. Yes. I don't care who it is, what kind of business it is, please support a Black business. And spread the word when you support them and let other people know. We got to start helping ourselves. No doubt. That's perfect ending right there, man. Peace, love, brother.